Shashi Tharoor born the 9th of March 1956 is an Indian politician writer and a former career international diplomat who is currently serving as member of parliament Lok Sabha from Tiruvannantapuram Kerala since 2009 he also currently serves as chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on External Affairs and All India Professionals Congress was previously Minister of State in the Government of India for External Affairs 2009-2010 and Human Resource Development 2012 to 2014. Taror is a member of the Indian National Congress and served as an official spokesperson for the party from January to October 2014. Until 2007, he was a career official at the United Nations, rising to the rank of Undersecretary General for Communications and Public Information in 2001. He announced his retirement after finishing second in the 2006 selection for UN Secretary General to Ban Ki moon. Taror is an acclaimed writer, having authored 18 best selling works of fiction and non fiction since 1981, which are centered on India and its history, culture, film, politics, society, foreign policy, and more related themes. He is also the author of hundreds of columns and articles in publications such as The New York Times, The Washington Post, Time, Newsweek, and The Times of India. He was a contributing editor for Newsweek International for two years. From 2010 to 2012, he wrote a column in the Asian Age, Deccan Chronicle and, for most of 2012, until his appointment as minister, a column in Mail Today. He also writes an internationally syndicated monthly column for Project Syndicate. He also wrote regular columns for the Indian Express 1991-93 and 1996-2001, The Hindu 2001-2008, and The Times of India 2007-2009. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Childhood and Education. Taror was born in London, United Kingdom to a Malayali Nair family of Lily and Chandran Taror of Palakkad, Kerala. His father worked in various positions in London, Bombay, Calcutta and Delhi, including a 25-year career culminating as group advertising manager for the statesman. His paternal uncle was Taror Parameshwaran, the founder of Reader's Digest in India. After his parents returned to India, Taror boarded at Montfort School, Yerkad, in 1962, subsequently moving to Bombay now Mumbai, and studying at the Campion School 1963 He spent his high school years at St. Xavier's Collegiate School in Calcutta 1969 He graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in History from St. Stephen's College, University of Delhi. In 1975, he moved to the United States to pursue graduate studies at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University, where he obtained his Master of Arts in Law and Diplomacy and completed his Ph.D. in International Relations and Affairs at the age of 22. At Fletcher, he was awarded the Robert B. Stewart Prize for Best Student and also helped found and was the first editor of the Fletcher Forum of International Affairs. He has also been awarded an honorary D. Lit. by the University of Puget Sound and a doctorate honoris causa in history by the University of Bucharest. Topic: Diplomatic career. Topic: Beginning. Taror's career in the United Nations began in 1978 as a staff member of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees UNHCR in Geneva. From 1981 until 1984 he was head of the UNHCR office in Singapore, during the Boat People Crisis, leading the organization's rescue efforts at sea and succeeding in resettling a backlog of Vietnamese refugees. He also processed Polish and Aisnese refugee cases. After a further stint at the UNHCR headquarters in Geneva, during which he became the first chairman of the staff elected by UNHCR personnel worldwide, Taror left UNHCR. In 1989 he was appointed Special Assistant to the Undersecretary General for Special Political Affairs, the unit that later became the Peacekeeping Operations Department in New York. Until 1996, he led the team responsible for peacekeeping operations in the former Yugoslavia, spending considerable time on the ground during the civil war there. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Assistant Secretary and Under Secretary General at the UN. 
In 1996, Taror was appointed Director of Communications and Special Projects and Executive Assistant to Secretary General Kofi Annan. On January 2001, Taror was appointed as Interim Head of the Department of Public Information at the Assistant Secretary General level. He was subsequently confirmed as the Undersecretary General for Communications and Public Information with effect from 1 June 2002. In this capacity, he was responsible for the United Nations Communications Strategy, enhancing the image and effectiveness of the organization. In 2003 the Secretary General gave him the additional responsibility of United Nations Coordinator for Multilingualism. During his tenure at the UNDPI, Taror reformed the department and undertook a number of initiatives, ranging from organizing and conducting the first ever UN seminar on antisemitism, the first ever UN seminar on Islamophobia after the 11th of September attacks, and launching an annual list of 10 underreported stories the world ought to know about, which was last produced in 2008 by his successor. On 9 February 2007, Taror resigned from the post of Undersecretary General and left the UN on 1 April 2007. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Campaign for UN Secretary General, 2006. In 2006, the government of India nominated Taror for the post of UN Secretary General. Had he won, the 50-year-old Shashi Tharoor would have become the second youngest Secretary General, after the 46-year-old Dag Hammarskjöld. Although all previous Secretary Generals had come from small countries, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and National Security Advisor M. K. Narayanan felt that Taror's candidacy would demonstrate India's willingness to play a larger role at the United Nations. Taror finished second, behind Ban Ki moon of South Korea, in each of the four straw polls conducted by the UN Security Council. In the final round, Ban emerged as the only candidate not to be vetoed by one of the permanent members, while Taror received one veto from the United States. U.S. Ambassador John Bolton later revealed his instructions from Condoleezza Rice, We don't want a strong Secretary General. Taror was a protege of the independently minded Kofi Annan, and a senior American official told Taror that the U.S. was determined to have no more Kofis. After the vote, Taror withdrew his candidacy and declined Ban Ki-moon's invitation to remain in service beyond the expiry of his term as Undersecretary General. <laughs> Post-UN career In February 2007, amidst speculation about his post-UN future, the Indian press reported that Taror might be inducted into Council of Ministers of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh as Minister of State for External Affairs. In the same month, an American gossip blog reported that Taror was a finalist for the position of Dean of the USC Annenberg School for Communication in Los Angeles, but he withdrew his name from consideration at the final stage. Instead, Taror became chairman of Dubai-based Offras Ventures, which established the Offras Academy for Business Communication AABC in Tiruvanantapuram, Kerala, the city in which he would go on to win two parliamentary elections. He also spoke around the world about India and Kerala, where he spent increasing amounts of time before moving for good to India in October 2008. Prior to embarking on his political career, Taror also served on the Board of Overseers of the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, the Board of Trustees of the Aspen Institute, and the Advisory Boards of the Indo-American Arts Council, the American India Foundation, the World Policy Journal, the Virtue Foundation, and the Human Rights Organization Breakthrough. At the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy in 1976, he founded and was the first chair of the editorial board of the Fletcher Forum of World Affairs, a journal examining issues in international relations. Taror was an international advisor to the International Committee of the Red Cross in Geneva from 2008 to 2011. He served on the advisory council of the Hague Institute for International Justice and was elected fellow of the New York Institute for the Humanities during 1995-96. He also supported various educational causes, including as patron of GEMS Modern Academy in Dubai. Political career in India Taror once said that when he began his political career he was approached by the Congress, the Communists, and the BJP. 
He chose Congress because he felt ideologically comfortable with it. In March 2009 Tarore contested the Indian general elections as a candidate for the Congress party in Tiruvanantapuram, Kerala. His opponents included P. Ramachandran Nair of the Communist Party of India CPI, Nilalohi Tadasan Nadar of the Bahujan Samaj Party BSP, M. P. Gangadharan of the Nationalist Congress Party NCP, and P. K. Krishna Das of the Bharatiya Janata Party BJP. Despite criticism that he was an elite outsider, Taror won the elections by a margin of about 100,000. He was then selected as a Minister of State in the Council of Ministers of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. On 28 May 2009, he was sworn in as Minister of State for External Affairs, in charge of Africa, Latin America, and the Gulf, including the Hajj pilgrimage, and the consular, passports, and visas services of the ministry. As Minister of State for External Affairs, he re established long dormant diplomatic relationships with African nations, where his fluency in French made him popular with Francophone countries and their heads of state. Taror was a pioneer in using social media as an instrument of political interaction. He was India's most followed politician on Twitter until 2013, when he was overtaken by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Some of his Twitter posts have proved controversial in the past and were highlighted negatively by the opposition and press. He was also the first Indian minister to visit Haiti after the devastating 2010 earthquake. He reformed the arrangements relating to the conduct of the Hajj pilgrimage. He initiated new policy planning activities on the Indian Ocean and represented India at various global events during his 11-month tenure as minister. In April 2010, he resigned from the position, following allegations that he had misused his office to get shares in the IPL cricket franchise. Taror denied the charges and, during his resignation speech in Parliament, called for a full inquiry. In a 2014 rejoinder he defended his position. I was never involved in a scam of any sort in the IPL I was brought down because I had antagonized some powerful political cricketing interests and added that he had "...cooperated extensively with the detailed investigation conducted by the Enforcement Directorate into the entire issue." And no wrongdoing had been found. Between 2010 and 2012, Taror remained active in Parliament and was member convener of the Parliamentary Forum on Disaster Management, a member of the Standing Committee on External Affairs, of the Consultative Committee of Defence, the Public Accounts Committee, and the Joint Parliamentary Committee on Telecoms. He participated in several important debates of the 15th Lok Sabha, including on the Lokpal Bill, the demand for grants of the Ministry of External Affairs and of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, the Black Money Debate, and so on. In the special debate on the 60th anniversary of the Indian Parliament, Taror was one of four members of the Congress Party, including Party President Sonia Gandhi, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, and leader of the House Pranab Mukherjee, to be invited to address the Lok Sabha. In 2012 Taror was re-inducted into the Union Council of Ministers by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh with the portfolio of Minister of State for HRD. In this role he took special interest in the problems and challenges of adult education, distance education and enhancing high-quality research by academic institutions. He was responsible for the ministry's written answers to Parliament's questions and responded to oral questions on education during the Lok Sabha's question hour. He addressed forums and conferences on education, explained a vision of India's educational challenges in the context of the country's demographic opportunities, and stressed that education was not only a socio-economic issue, but also a national security issue. As Member of Parliament for Tiruvanantapuram, Taror became the first elected representative in India to issue annual reports on his work as MP, including furnishing accounts of his MPLADS expenditure. In 2012 he published a half-term report followed in 2014 by a full-term report. In May 2014 Taror won his re-election from Tiruvanantapuram, defeating O. Rahagopal of the Bharatiya Janata Party by a margin of around 15,700 votes, and became a member of the 16th Lok Sabha, sitting in opposition. He was named chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on External Affairs. Shashi Taror was dropped from the post of Congress spokesperson on 13 October 2014 after he praised statements of his party's opponent, Prime Minister Modi, in regards to Taror's removal from the post of Congress spokesperson, Calcutta's The Telegraph opined.
for an opposition MP to have and to exercise the freedom to appreciate a good thing done by the government and for a ruling party MP to speak and vote against the party line is not just legitimate parliamentary practice, it is the very essence of parliamentary democracy. Shushi Taror, from the ranks of the Congress has tried to do that, there is not one BJP MP who has matched him. Blind conformism is not loyalty, nor independent thinking, dissent. After the BJP victory of 2014, Taror was asked to help the Treasury benches draft a statement condemning Pakistan for freeing Zaki ur Rahman Lakhvi, the Lashkar e Toiba commander, who masterminded the 2008 Mumbai attacks that killed 166 people. In January 2015, Taror asked not to debunk genuine accomplishments of ancient Indian science due to exaggerations of the Hindutva Brigade. Amid 2015 Indian Science Congress ancient aircraft controversy, in March 2017, Taror called for the Victoria Memorial in Kolkata to be converted into a museum on atrocities by the United Kingdom during its rule in India. He wrote in an Al Jazeera column that British Empire conquered one of the richest countries in the world 27% of global gross domestic product in 1700 and reduced it to, after over two centuries of looting and exploitation, one of the poorest, most diseased and most illiterate countries on earth by the time they left in 1947. Nor is there any memorial to the massacres of the Raj, from Delhi in 1857 to Amritsar in 1919, the deaths of 35 million Indians in totally unnecessary famines caused by British policy. Although many people want him to contest as the Prime Minister candidate in 2019 general elections, he has disowned, downplayed, and humbly distanced himself from any such online campaigns run by his large number of followers. Dr. Taror has also tried to introduce a number of private members' bills in the parliament. Notably, his efforts to amend the Article 377 were voted out by the majority of parliamentarians on two occasions. Interestingly, the Apex Court of India later ruled in favour of amending the controversial article in 2018, vindicating the views upheld by Dr. Taror, thereby. Speeches. <laughs> <laughs> Taror is notable for his eloquence while speaking, as demonstrated by the popularity of his speeches on online platforms such as YouTube. For instance, his speech decrying British colonialism, delivered at the Oxford Union in 2015, has amassed over 5 million views on one site alone, while simultaneously being praised as groundbreaking in various educational institutions in India. Further speeches such as those explaining the importance of soft power and analyzing the impacts of education in India have garnered over 1 million and 2 million views respectively. Additionally, Taror is known for his views on a number of topics including economics, history, governance, and geopolitics due to both his well-regarded educational attainment and his broad experience while at the United Nations. He is an outspoken supporter of the campaign for the establishment of a United Nations Parliamentary Assembly, an organization which campaigns for democratic reformation of the United Nations, arguing that, "...United Nations needs to open its doors to elected representatives." Many note that it is his combination of wit, charm, wry humor, and intelligence that make him accessible and held in high esteem, both in India and abroad. Topic. Controversies In September 2009, Taror and S. M. Krishna were accused of staying in luxurious five-star hotels. Taror said it was because of the delayed readiness of his official residence and that he had paid out of his own pocket for the accommodation. Later, on Pranab Mukherjee's request, Taror and Krishna moved out of the hotels. A controversy erupted when Taror, responding to the question as to whether he would travel in cattle class, replied that he would, out of solidarity with all our holy cows. This remark on Twitter, at Shashitaror, was alleged to equate the traveling public to cattle and taunt his party, the Indian National Congress over its austerity drive. Taror's explanation that, cattle class was a well-established phrase for economy class travel, and that it attacked the airlines and not the passengers, was ignored in the outcry. It was also reported that Congress may take action against him. However, this was subsequently resolved when the Prime Minister pointed out to the media that the statement was a joke. 
Taror was in the news again for publicly criticizing the new visa guidelines adopted by the Indian government in the wake of the gaps exposed by the arrest of 26 11th terror suspects, David Headley and Tahawar Rana. For this he was criticized for breaking ranks with the official position of the government. He later met external affairs minister, S.M. Krishna, and explained his position on the issue. The rules were subsequently partly modified. In January 2010, Taror criticized Nehru for his conduct of Indian foreign policy in remarks that were distorted by the Indian media. The critique angered his party, the Indian National Congress. In the wake of this controversy, he held a press conference describing the report as inaccurate and tendentious. In February 2010 when accompanying Prime Minister Manmohan Singh on a three-day visit to Saudi Arabia, he said, We feel that Saudi Arabia has a long and close relationship with Pakistan, that makes Saudi Arabia even more a valuable interlocutor for us. When we tell them about our experience, Saudi Arabia listens as somebody who is not in any way an enemy of Pakistan, but a friend of Pakistan and, therefore, will listen with sympathy and concern to a matter of this nature. He was asked whether India expected Saudi Arabia, given its close ties with Islamabad, to help address the terror threat from Pakistan. The remark about Saudi Arabia being a valuable interlocutor raised a strong reaction within the Indian political circle. The Pakistani press even went on to report that he had proposed that Saudi Arabia play a mediator's role in improving India's relationship with Pakistan. In response, Taror denied that interlocutor meant mediator, and tweeted an explanation, saying, An interlocutor is someone you speak to. If I speak to you, you are my interlocutor. I mentioned the Saudis as our interlocutors, i.e. the people we are here to speak to. In 2014, Taror expressed support for Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, a social campaign initiated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Following this, the Kerala Pradesh Congress Committee lodged a complaint against him to the Congress High Command for his pro-Modi stance. Following this, Taror was dropped as the official spokesperson of the party. In 2016, while speaking at JNU on nationalism, Taror compared Kanheya Kumar, a student charged with sedition, with Bhagat Singh, an Indian independence fighter. This comparison generated a great public controversy, even the party distancing themselves with Taror's views. On 9 May 2017, Republic TV broadcast tapes of phone recordings between journalists and Taror's close aide Narayan, alleging that these implied Taror's involvement in the murder of his wife. Later, in a series of tweets, Taror claimed that the reports by Republic TV were misinterpretations and outright lies. He also challenged broadcast journalist Arnab Goswami to prove the same in a court of law. On 10 May 2017, the Huffington Post stated, It's openly speculated that besides the desperate viewership game of any new TV channel, the motive behind the re-emergence of the Taror story is to discredit him in the Tiruvanantapuram Parliament constituency ahead of the 2019 elections. The needle of suspicion is on the co-promoter of the channel and BJP Raja Sabha MP Rajiv Chandrasekhar, who was recently named the NDA Vice Chairman for Kerala. In 2017, Taror put the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill in the same category as some of the worst genocidal dictators of the 20th century, saying that Churchill is one of the more evil rulers of the 20th century only fit to stand in the company of the likes of Hitler, Mao and Stalin. Churchill has as much blood on his hands as Hitler does particularly the decisions that he personally signed off during the Bengal famine when 4.3 million people died because of the decisions he took or endorsed. In July 2018, Shashi Taror said India will become a Hindu Pakistan if the BJP wins elections in 2019. His party, Congress, distanced itself from the comment and advised its leaders on responsible phraseology. In August 2018, Taror commented on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's unwillingness to wear a Muslim skull cap, when he stated, Why does our PM, who wears all sorts of outlandish headgear whenever he goes around country, around the world, why does he always refuse to wear a Muslim skull cap? You see him in hilarious Naga head dress with feathers, various kinds of extraordinary outfits, which is right thing for PM to do, Indira Gandhi has also been photographed wearing various kinds of costume. This invited criticism from a lot of ministers in the central government as well as chief ministers of the respective northeastern states. They accused Taror of being insensitive and racist towards the local tradition, culture of the people of northeast. 
In a response to a tweet, Taror clarified that he had been referring to the ceremonial headdress offered to visiting dignitaries, not daily wear, adding that when PM wears all types of headgear. Why does he avoid just one? Topic: <laughs> Literary career. Taror has written numerous books in English. Taror has been a columnist in each of India's three best-known English language newspapers, most recently for the Hindu, 2001 to 2008, and in a weekly column, Shushi on Sunday, in the Times of India, January 2007 to December 2008. Following his resignation as Minister of State for External Affairs, he began a fortnightly column on foreign policy issues in the Deccan Chronicle. Previously he was a columnist for the Gentleman magazine and the Indian Express newspaper, as well as a frequent contributor to Newsweek International and the International Herald Tribune. His op eds and book reviews have appeared in The Washington Post, The New York Times and The Los Angeles Times, amongst other papers. His monthly column, India Reawakening. Distributed by Project Syndicate, appears in 80 newspapers around the world. Taror began writing at the age of six, and his first published story appeared in the Sunday edition of the Free Press Journal, in Mumbai at age 10. His World War II adventure novel Operation Bellows, inspired by the Biggles books, was serialized in The Junior Statesman starting a week before his 11th birthday. Each of his books has been a bestseller in India. The Great Indian Novel is in its 42nd edition, and a Silver Jubilee special edition was issued on the book's 25th anniversary, September 2014, by Viking Penguin India. The Elephant, the Tiger, and the Cellphone has also undergone several hardback reprints. President Bill Clinton cited Shashi Tharoor's book India from Midnight to the Millennium in his speech to the Indian Parliament in 2000. Tharoor has lectured widely on India, and is often quoted for his observations, including India is not, as people keep calling it, an underdeveloped country, but rather, in the context of its history and cultural heritage, a highly developed one in an advanced state of decay." He also coined a comparison of India's Tali to the American melting pot. If America is a melting pot, then to me India is a Tali, a selection of sumptuous dishes in different bowls. Each tastes different, and does not necessarily mix with the next, but they belong together on the same plate, and they complement each other in making the meal a satisfying repast." Shushi Taror's non-fiction work An Era of Darkness, published in the UK as Inglorious Empire, What the British Did to India, arising out of a speech he delivered at the Oxford Union, was published in 2016. It sold over 50,000 copies in eight hardback reprints within six months of publication. The UK edition rose to number one in the London Evening Standard bestseller lists. Since then, he has published two other non-fiction books, Why I Am a Hindu 2018 and The Paradoxical Prime Minister 2018, both of which have been published in the Indian subcontinent by Aleph Book Company. Victor Mallet in the Financial Times said Taror, "...wants us to understand the origins of the difficulties that confronted India after 1947," attributing most of that to colonialism. New Statesman said it was especially important to read as sardonic talk of Empire 2.0 came up post-Brexit. Taror has called for Britain to pay reparations to India for the lasting toll that colonial rule exacted on the country. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Personal life. Taror's first wife was Tulatama Mukherjee, a granddaughter of Kailashnath Katju and thus a first cousin of Markandi Katju. She is now a professor of humanities at New York University. They have two sons, Kanishk and Ishan. Ishan is a former senior editor at Time magazine, and now writes on foreign affairs for the Washington Post. Kanishk is a former editor at Open Democracy, is the author of the highly praised short story collection Swimmer Among the Stars, and he is working on a novel in New York. Kanishk also served as associate editor at OpenDemocracy.net 2006-09. Following his split with Tulatama, Taror married Krista Giles, a Canadian diplomat working at the United Nations in 2007. After their subsequent divorce soon after his return to India, Taror married Sunanda Pushkar in his ancestral home in Elevanchari village in Kerala's Palakkad district in August 2010. On 17 January 2014, Sunanda, aged 50, died at the Leela Hotel in Chanakyapuri, New Delhi. Taror is a vegetarian and he 
abhors the idea of consuming the corpses of animals, although he claimed that he does not have a problem with those who do. He has stated that he is very proud of being a Hindu, and that he's a worshipping and believing Hindu. Tarur also claims to have read a fair amount of the Upanishads. <laughs> Mayor Tarar's Twitter controversy and Sunanda Pushkar's death On 15 January 2014, a series of intimate messages, supposedly sent by the Pakistani journalist Mayor Tarar to Tarur, were posted on the latter's Twitter account. The messages proclaimed Tarar's love for Tarur. Tarar tried to downplay the incident by stating that her account had been hacked. However, Sunanda later stated that the account had not been hacked and that she had posted the messages to expose what she believed to be Tarar's stalking of her husband. She accused Mare of being an ISI agent. Later, she stated that she did not want to go public about the matter, especially in an election year. The next day, a note titled as, Joint Statement by Sunanda and Shushi Tarur, was published on Shushi Tarur's Facebook page. The note stated that the couple was happily married, and that some personal comments not intended for publication had been misrepresented after being posted to Twitter. The note also stated that Sunanda had been hospitalized after being ill, and was seeking rest. She was being treated for lupus erythematosus, a deadly immune disorder which damages healthy tissues. On 17 January 2014, a day after the Twitter controversy, Sunanda was found dead in room number 345 of the Leela Palace Hotel in Chanakyapuri, New Delhi, where the couple had shifted to, as their house was being renovated and painted. Shushi Taror discovered her body, when she did not wake up from her sleep in the evening. He informed the Delhi police, who recovered the body from the hotel and sent it for postmortem. According to initial reports, Sunanda was suspected to have committed suicide. Later reports stated that the cause of death was unnatural. The doctors at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences gave a preliminary autopsy report that revealed injury marks on her body. They said that these injuries may not be the cause of death. The autopsy indicated that she died of drug overdose, most likely a combination of sedatives, other strong medicines and probably alcohol. An investigation has been ordered by the sub-divisional magistrate to examine the cause of poisoning and to ascertain if it was murder or suicide. Her body was cremated at Lodi Crematorium in South Delhi. Doctors at Kim's Hospital Trivandrum, where she had been hospitalized for three days a few days earlier said that Sunanda did not have serious health problems. However, Sunanda had hinted about her death, hours before her body was recovered from the hotel. On 1 July 2014, controversy over her death deepened when AIIMS Dr. Sadir Gupta claimed that he was pressured to give a false report in the case. On 10 October, the medical team probing her death concluded that she died of poisoning. On 6 January 2015, the Delhi police reported that Sunanda was murdered and filed fur in the regard. Subramanian Swami, a politician of the BJP, has tried to fight this case against Taror in January 2015. On 20 May 2015 a trial court allowed the Delhi police to conduct lie detector test on three suspects related to her death. The case became a talking point again in 2017 after the release of a series of secret videotapes by the tabloid television channel Republic TV in connection to Sunanda's death. Key alleged claims included, a Sunanda's body was moved from room number 307 to 345 of Leela indicating that the murder scene and body was tampered with before the investigation began, b Shushi Taror had revisited the hotel after leaving it at 6.30 a.m., and had hid this piece of information when investigated. C. Taped evidence emerged of Shushi and Sunanda having fought all night on the day of her murder. D. On 10 October 2014, Taror tried to influence the him through Rajan Rao, a Delhi based operative. Rajan Rao is the same individual who had previously claimed that he was Shushi Taror's friend and had also claimed that Shushi Taror's ex OSD had called him on the day Sunanda was found dead. Taror denied all these allegations and sued Republic TV and its anchor Arnab Goswami for defamation. In May 2018, Taror was charged with abetment to suicide of his wife and marital cruelty under sections 306 and 498A of the Indian Penal Code. If convicted, Taror could serve up to 10 years in jail. Topic: 
Honors, Awards and International Recognition 1976 Rajika Kripalani Young Journalist Award for the Best Indian Journalist Under 30 1990 Federation of Indian Publishers Hindustan Times Literary Award for the Best Book of the Year for the Great Indian Novel 1991 Commonwealth Writers Prize for the Best Book of the Year in the Eurasian Region, for the Great Indian Novel 1998 Excelsior Award for Excellence in Literature, Association of Indians in America and the Network of Indian Professionals 2000 Doctor of Letters in International Affairs by the University of Puget Sound 1998 Global Leader of Tomorrow, World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland 2004 Pravazi Bharatiya Salmon, India's highest honour for non-resident Indians accepted 2007 2008 Doctorate Honoris Causa, University of Bucharest, Romania 2009 Zakir Hussain Memorial, Pride of India, Award 2009 Inspiration of the Year Award at GQ's Man of the Year Awards 2009 Hakim Khan Sir Award for National Integration, Maharana of Udaipur 2010 Sarva Dashiya Pratiba Award, Pazasiraja Charitable Trust, Kori Code 2010, New Age Politician of the Year Award, at NDTV's Indian of the Year Awards 2010 Fifth IILM Distinguished Global Thinker Award, New Delhi 2010 Digital Person of the Year, Indian Digital Media Awards IDMA, for popularizing the digital medium in India 2013 First Sri Narayan Guru Global Secular and Peace Award at Tiruvananthapuram. 2013 PETA's Person of the Year. Topic: Bibliography. Topic: Fiction. The Great Indian Novel 1989 The $5 Smile and Other Stories 1990 Show Business 1992 Riot 2001 Topic <laughs> Nonfiction Reasons of State 1985 India From Midnight to the Millennium 1997 Nehru, The Invention of India 2003. Bookless in Baghdad 2005. The Elephant, the Tiger, and the Cell Phone, Reflections on India, The Emerging 21st Century Power 2007. Shadows Across the Playing Field, 60 Years of India-Pakistan Cricket 2009 with Shaharir Khan Pax Indica, India and the World of the 21st Century 2012. India, The Future Is Now Editor, 2013. India Shastra, Reflections on the Nation in Our Time 2015. An Era of Darkness, The British Empire in India 2016. Its UK edition is Inglorious Empire, What the British Did to India 2017. Why I Am a Hindu 2018. The Paradoxical Prime Minister 2018. Topic. Illustrated books Kerala, God's Own Country 2002, along with artist M. F. Hussain. Ind in French or India in English 2008, along with photographer Ferranti Ferranti. <laughs>